Now, having done this for close to 40 years, you realize that the season has so many ebbs and flows in it. It's not like football where you have to hang your hat on every loss every weekend. Uh, sometimes you got to weather some, some losses and some losing streaks. And sometimes you have an opportunity to find yourself within your adversity. And I thought this team did a tremendous job because uh, you had an opportunity to play uh, the highest scoring team in the conference, best free throw shooting team, best three point shooting team. Uh, no question about it, they got two pros on that team. And to give the type of effort that we gave uh, defensively in this ball game, uh, just the scoring, had the five guys in double figures, not turning it over. Again, it was very similar to Washington on the road, Cal on the road, and even Oregon. It was like an NCAA tournament game with the energy in the building. Uh, I'm real, real proud of this team because everybody answered. Every button we pushed was the right thing. Everybody gave us something in the game. And Devontae Lacey was just fabulous in the game. And the fact that he came over to the bench uh, in the last six or seven minutes of the game and said, put me on Randall. So not only did he do it on the offensive end, I thought it was the difference in the game for us to get him cooled down a little bit because he certainly went into his normal Superman routine in the second half and started to light everybody up. I thought again, um, the students that came to the game, uh, the community, uh, they were treated to a great college basketball game. They saw an NCAA tournament team with several pros on the floor. Uh, I don't know what more we can do, but when you build a basketball program or a football program for that matter, any program, you cannot do it the winning first, the fan second. You have to come together. Because when you come together, you're part of the process. This team fed off the energy in that building. And those students in the community showed up. They were fantastic. There's no way we could have won this game and played the defense we played and got them to take some of the tough shots they took without the energy that was provided in that building by the community and those students that showed up. So I'm hoping they'll let us get out here and weather a very uh, tough road trip coming up. Oregon State undefeated, I believe, at home. And, and they got a tremendous crowd over at Gill Coliseum. And the emotion that'll go into the Oregon game as well and be here for us when we get back because we can close out the season at home with some fantastic basketball games and we need the crowd to do that. That should be everything answered for you. Can I go now? I got a <laughs> event to no, go to. Got a lot for you, right? Oh, you bet. Well, that, uh, that starting lineup change, uh, what prompted you to, to switch over Ike over to point guard and insert Q? We lost four games in a row. And sometimes you get stagnant. It's time for you to do some things differently just to ignite you. Uh, we felt like Cal uh, did a good job of sagging off for nine, really clogging up the middle of our motion, our drive game, our, our inside post-up game. And we needed to make the adjustment to get more firepower on the floor. Um, Stanford, bigger team, better scoring team, where we could play those wings, those big wings of theirs a little bit better. And two things happened with the change in lineup. Uh, Q Johnson responded in a big time way because I thought he did a great job of getting us going in the game early. And Nye Redding showed with tremendous character of his family and his faith to be able to come off that bench without complaining at all and give us energy in the game and did everything right on the bench and everything right in the locker room to handle it well. Young people just don't respond like that in this day and age and I thought he was fantastic. Otherwise it would have not have worked. So. My hat's off to both of those guys. They handled both the situations well. For him to, to lose his starting spot like that and then make the two critical free throws in the game, what, what did that tell you? And was he the guy you wanted to get fouled there? It, we had all free throw shooters on the floor. It told me about the character, again, of him as a young man and his family. Because typically, if somebody would have powdered in that situation, you know what they say about karma? Because he would have went to that line and choked up. But for him to handle the situation right, it kept his mental in the game. He was great defensively when he came in the game. We, we moved him in and out at the right time, and I thought he was excellent closing the game out down the stretch. Jordan had 10 points, five rebounds, three blocks tonight. What can you get out of him to, to make that more consistent? You know, um, I thought he's had a, a pretty good year from where he's come from, and, and you always got to continue to give Jordan confidence. And we talked about this in the locker room before the game. If he did not play big in the game, we were not going to win the game because we had to neutralize nasty with the performance, and he gave it. We have to neutralize Reed with the performance, and Josh gave it. Brown, Randall, they got so many players, we needed to step up and, and play, and I thought everybody played well to have five guys in double figures. Jordan did his part, but so did Josh, and obviously Devontae, I, they all stepped up and did their thing in the game. Uh, Dex was good in the game as well, too, so it was huge for us to have Jordan as a presence to neutralize their size on the floor. How do you, uh, how do you, 
after a couple of those fouls on decks, how did you like his, his poise and his uh, patience after, after getting called for some of those? Usually your team is an extension of your head coach, so I got pretty poised after I jumped up and down, spin around and moonwalk like Michael Jackson. I was poised after that. <laughs> so I think the Dex is credit. Um, we always say you never get too up, you never get too down. Just keep moving on. So uh, he missed a critical free throw block out, but yet he came back. And that, that rebound he had at the end, even though they called it a jump ball, that was huge. Because they could have caught and scored on that. That was just a big time play on his part. What did it tell you about this team early on, down 14, responding the way that they did and making it making it a game at halftime? Well, I think, again, you know, you, we're going to disappoint people again. We might get to place, you know, six, 7,000 in here and lose a ball game. That's okay. That's all part of, of growing up. and It's all a part about putting this together. But what it told me is that after a tough loss against Cal, where we did some things wrong down the stretch, players and coaches, and to have the character to get down in a game by that much against a team of that caliber, to dig in and defend and come back on a possession by possession basis, Stanford forced us to grow up because they were not going to come down a level. We had to go up to their level and be just as mentally tough, physically tough, uh, just as tough scoring the ball inside, outside as they are. So it just told me the growth potential that's still in this team. If you can keep them consistent at a level, they still have tremendous growth potential. And I'm going to just get back to the drawing board and keep them moving forward. That's got to be enough there. He does have a bunch of negatives, so if there's one more question. <laughs> no, no more questions. No more good. <laughs> 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 <laughs>